I'm Adobe Certified Instructor Jeff Witchell and today's Illustrator Quick Tips tutorial is titled Quick! Find a Color Palette for Your Client. I was working on a branding project for one of my clients and I already had a logo design that used a particular PMS color. Now I wanted to experiment with various color palettes that would go with my logo color. Well, I wonder, can Illustrator help me with my color experimentation? Absolutely. Adobe Illustrator has a whole color lab built right into it. Besides live color and recolor artwork, there's something called Color Guide, which is what we're going to be using today in this tutorial. The color that I actually started with, my client's color, was Pantone 2728 which is a nice rich blue, and I wanted to pick a whole palette of colors to go with it. Well, why don't we take a look at the color guide panel to see what we might be able to do. Starting with the options menu, if you're not seeing all of your options and it looks something like this, make sure to go to show options. Also, by default, it's showing tints and shades of my original color in this first row. You can see to the left are all of the shades. My original color has an arrow pointing at it, and then there's tints of that selected color to the right. What else is there? Well, I could show warmer or cooler versions of my original color. So here's my original color with the arrow pointing at it in the middle. Warmer versions of that color are to the left and cooler versions of the color are to the right. What else is there? Well, there's also something called vivid muted. My original color still has the arrow pointing at it in the middle. There's muted colors to the left and more vivid versions of my original color to the right. But that's really just the beginning. If I have certain colors that I picked out using something called Harmony Rules, I can save those colors as a color group simply by clicking on the little color group button down the bottom. And you can see it added these two colors in a color group. Immediately to the left of that button is Edit Colors, which is part of Live Color. Let me click on that to show you it just opens Live Color. So I can either assign colors or edit colors using a color wheel. Let me hit Cancel. But the part of the color guide panel that I'm most interested in is actually something called Harmony Rules to get colors that I know are going to be part of a color book, I want to limit the end result to a particular Pantone library. If I click down on the library pop-up and go to color books, I can choose Pantone Plus Color Bridge Coded. The reason that I'm doing that is I want to make sure that I have something to check, some printed reference for the color palette that I end up with, just to make sure, because I don't want to entirely trust what's on my screen. Now, let's get going. The first Harmony rule has actually already been selected. It's something called complementary. A lot of clients mistakenly believe that complementary are any colors that go with each other. They complement each other. That's not what it is. Complementary colors are actually on the opposite sides of the color wheel, so they're opposites. And just to show you what I'm talking about, I save this particular color that is a complement when I save that color group. Let me just select that color and drag it over immediately to the right of my original colored in object. And you can see they are opposites. Why don't we take a look at some of these other color rules? And there are a lot of them. Like, for instance, there's something called Complementary 2. Why don't we go to Complementary 2 and see what happens? 
and we'll save this as a group as well. And now drag the colors from the swatches panel into our empty boxes. And that's kind of a nice group. The nice thing about this is even if you know nothing about color theory, you can experiment with the color guide using Harmony rules. Just play with it. Let me show you some other examples. I'm going to go to something called analogous. Analogous colors are colors that are very much in the same area of the color wheel. Let me save this as a color group and click off of it and now drag it to my next row here and see what I end up with. And you can see they're all very much in the blue related area. So it's the same part of the color wheel. Let me go to my next harmony rule. How about shades? This is exactly what it sounds like. It's shades of my original color. Let me now save this as another group and just see what we end up with. And yes, it is shades. Let me just scroll down a little bit and continue. Besides analogous colors, there's also something called monochromatic, very similar to analogous. Let me just save this as a group and show you what I mean. I'm going to click the second color in the group and you can see that they are colors that are in very much the same area of the color wheel. They're very closely related. Why don't we go to something called high contrast. I'm actually going to scroll down and I'm going to choose one of the high contrast. How about high contrast number three? And I'm going to save this as a group as well and click off of the group click on the second swatch and drag it in kind of an interesting group why don't we try one more this is actually the harmony rule that I ended up using it's called pentagram now what is a pentagram if you took your original color and divided the color wheel up into five equal parts these are the colors that you would end up with. So they're one-fifth of the way around the color wheel from each other. Let me save this as a group, which I can also do up here, and click off of my new group, and let's see what I actually ended up with. I'm just going to click and drag each one of these to my empty squares and fill them in with those colors. And that's kind of a nice combination. And you can see exactly what I mean. They're about a fifth of the way around the color wheel from each other. And it ended up working out absolutely beautifully for this particular client. Well, that's about it for today. Make sure to stay tuned for more Adobe Illustrator quick tips.